Here we go again, Phoenix Maniacs. So these are the latest two months of Phoenix since the 18th of August 2022. Since then we had no new releases, but the time is coming because the nightly challenge walk has already reached the end of my screen and this means that the release is nearing. Also where you can find the nightly challenge walk, it's in a zip file alongside all of the nightlies at these two links so you can check whatever is new every day. So what has everyone in the team been up to? To the upper right of your screen as always you can see the photos of everyone one in the team. So first of all, the Phoenix standalone simulator has become even more powerful and now it supports animations of the transforms of geometries and also the transforms of simulators and also animated fold parameters. So this way more toolbar presets can work exactly the same way as they work in Max and Maya. Also I'm passing the verbosity from Max and Maya to the standalone simulator when you launch it from them. Also the option to exclude hidden geometries is now supported in the standalone simulator and I sped up some parts of the simulation so now you can see that uh, compared to Max and compared to Maya the standalone simulator is always faster, sometimes with about 5-10% and sometimes with 50%. The former modifiers, I keep working on them, so in 3ds Max these are the bend, skew, taper, twist, melt and stretch modifiers. Now they have progress bars when they are built before rendering, so you can also cancel them if you don't like them. Also the particle shader now supports motion blur, I have, uh, I'm yet to port this to the voxel shader. Volumetric geometry works, ISO surface mode works. Grid texture also works, so this is the two bar paints preset which has color uh, which is read by the grid texture and you can see that you can twist it and it works fine. And also uh, here is a deformed liquid simulator with initial fill up which I've plugged into a source and then used as an emitter in a different simulator, so now this also works. Also I made some improvements to the way uh, the formations are sampled, so now there is no visible flickering and it's also fast and looking good. Okay, now in Maya the very volume grid samples textures in the viewport faster. So when do you need this? When meshing a texture or when you use the uh, GPU preview where the opacity is mapped by a texture. Also the quick setup toolbar presets are now uh, now have animations that are relative to the timeline start frame, so if for example your animation starts on frame 1000, the two bar quick setups are going to adapt. I also ported the phase function control to the particle shader fog mode and here is how it looks. This is how it looked before, this is how it looks with phase function of 0.7, so now you can get forward scattering for the particle shader in fog mode. Also, there is finally an error if you have installed incompatible Phoenix and V-Ray versions. So now when you start rendering, it's going to tell you if you have, for example, V-Ray 6 and the Phoenix installer for V-Ray 5, there is an error which would explain exactly what you did wrong. Here is how the different Phoenix versions on the download section of chaos.com look. So there is a separate Phoenix installer for V-Ray 6, V-Ray 5, V-Ray Next. And now Phoenix is also bundled with Corona 9. And uh, since uh, just recently we bundled Phoenix with V-Ray 6 Premium and I have to explain to you that if you are using V-Ray you need to install the proper version of Phoenix for V-Ray but if you're using any other renderer such as Corona or Octane or Arnold or whatever you don't need to bother about this, you can install any of these versions that you like, it doesn't matter. The restriction is just for V-Ray. Uh, Ballistic particles, these were an experiment that I did and they are not even in the nightly set, I hope to have time to go back to them, they are an upgrade of the drag particles. The flip liquid simulations got a new splash split option, as a splash particle fly, fly, flies through the air it breaks up into smaller splash particles, so this could happen too quickly and now you have an option to control this. So for example if you completely disable the uh, splash breakup into smaller particles, this is how it's going to look, and if a splash particle splits into other particles much, way 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 too often, it's going to look like this. Okay. In 3ds Max, if I tried to add like 500 nodes into a source or in the scene interaction rollout, it took one minute. So I made a new button that just does that automatically because uh, otherwise it's way too slow and now this is handled well. 
Also, I ported from Maya a, an option to uh, into the 3ds Max Preferences dialog, which is a default cache directory. So by default, uh, you know that Phoenix for Max writes the caches alongside each of those uh, each of your scene files, and now you can redirect this to a one single directory. And finally, I've been writing the 3ds Max user interface to Qt. So this affects only Max 2019 and newer. And in older Maxes, selecting the Phoenix simulator was fast. Then it suddenly started becoming slower because Max started emulating our old new our old user interface to Qt. And now when you select a simulator, it's very slow. So in order to fix this, now importing it to Qt. Uh, the foam and ocean, ocean textures are now done. I did them as an, as an exercise and then I proceeded to the, to the simulator rollout. So now roughly half of the simulator rollouts are done. And then the V-Ray volume grid rollouts, the, like the preview and the rendering rollouts are also going to get ported. And as a side effect, we got not only, we got video cannot be loaded. Please, load my video, please. Okay, here it is. And now the fuel rollout can be expanded like this and it turns into a floating window, which you can dock anywhere in the 3ds Max user interface like this. It also has a pin button so that when you deselect the simulator, it's going to remain there and you can keep adjusting options without having the simulator selected. If you dock another uh, row out here, they are turning into tabs and so on. Okay, this is already in the 90s and it's going to come in the next official Phoenix release. Uh, Kao has been uh, doing some fixes to rendering Ocean Mesh with a V-Ray DOM camera and also the flip liquid viscous simulations were a bit asymmetric and now they are properly straight like this. Also uh, various fixes to the thinking particles operators, fixes to the active bodies and he's been acting, uh, he's been adding air drag to very wide active bodies such as this beach ball which otherwise starts flying out in outer space sometimes. Tsetsi uh, has been doing some fixes to the Maya GPU preview which disregarded whether lights were on and off and also they ignored many of the white attributes and also fixes to the uh, GPU preview which had small capacity modulated by texture. And also he is working on a brand new GPU preview implementation which supports geometries which are intersecting the simulator or even simulators intersecting one another so stay tuned for this as well. Vladi has finished the four streamline preview in Max and Maya and it's already in the 90s and also found and fixed a couple of Maya preview crashes. Here is how the four streamlines work. So you could preview your forces before running the simulation. Before this we had a uh, force vector preview which wasn't as informative so now the four streamlines can really show you what's going on. So finally we have two streamline previews, velocity streamlines and four streamlines and now what is working on to the next uh, thing which is converting those streamline previews into actual renderable curves in Max and Maya. So this is already working in the night list and now he is working on animation support. Jorkata published a new article on chaos.com's blog and it's about tips on how to use Phoenix to improve your Argvis scenes. So make sure to check this out. And he has also created a proof of concept script which takes a Phoenix standalone simulation and runs it, submits it through deadline. And after the simulation is done, the Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix standalone previewer takes the cache sequence and turns it, turns it into an image sequence. And then Chaos Player takes the image sequence and turns it into a video. It works. Hammer uh, finished his new tutorial, Cosmetic Bottle Splash. It uses the new voxel shader node for white water shading without any particles. Here is how it works. And this is not everything. He has also been working on a, another blog. Uh, blog post for chaos.com about tips for improving your Phoenix simulation and also he's remaking an explosion from the slow mo guys. And here is a work in progress simulation render which shows you what it's going to be about. 
And Hammer Chain has also been working on a new waterfall tutorial, so it's almost complete. Stay tuned. And uh, Swavi has been updating tutorials, example scenes, and different template scenes, which got outdated over the years on the doc site. And also, uh, she is going to uh, to have ready a couple of new pages with the supported Corona features in Phoenix and the supported Corona render elements in Phoenix. So stay tuned for this as well. And she also ported the Rocket example scene from Max to Maya and also improved the original 3ds Max scene. And here is how the scene looks in Maya. All right, Corey. He uh, updated the uh, court absorption example scenes on the docs, and here is how those look. So now we have comparison between different stuff that you can achieve using the court absorption. This is for the voxel shader, and this is for the particle shader in fog mode. So you can see the different results that you can get with the court absorption. And here is also Hammer Chance Epic Wave with different. Uh, covert absorption settings for the mist. And also Corey has been working on a pool scene which you already saw in the previous slides and on the new coffee scene which is right here. Also Corey has just published a couple of uh, articles on the Chaos blog which are a, uh, uh, the, just the essentials of his uh, Phoenix Basics videos gathered and you can check them out as well. And finally, ending up with Phoenix, the Phoenix's quiet show of so in the Phoenix Facebook group, uh, we have two posts which stand out for the last two months. So first is Gerson Silveira, which did this gorgeous viscosity simulation. And then the other great work is by Muhammad Nagi, who did this awesome Phoenix Ocean scene. Okay, and check this out. Thanks to Phoenix AD for saving this little one. So uh, uh, you're welcome. But uh, actually, these are the Phoenix Arizona Fire Department. So great job, guys. And thanks everyone for watching and bye.